In today's video, we're gonna take a look at some new Blender tutorials such as how to make a 3D shoe product animation, a tracking tutorial, rigging, geometry nodes and more. We're gonna start with this tutorial from Cleverboy. You will learn how simple it is to make blood flow through the rocks using only a few geometry nodes. At first glance, you will assume that he used a lot of fluid simulation to create the effect, but in reality, he didn't use any simulations, which is rather advantageous for users of low-spec PCs. Furthermore, while this node setup may appear to be very complex, it is simply a few nodes that have been duplicated multiple times to produce the desired effect. On a side note, the effect he created is somewhat reminiscent of the opening credits of Game of Thrones prequel series called House of the Dragons. The next tutorial we're gonna talk about is from Taki3D. In this video, he talks about camera rigs in Blender and how amazing they are. It is just a 5 minute video demonstration of the power of camera rigs in Blender. He also shows you how easily it is to build one yourself, which is very useful in my opinion. He basically shows you how to use constraints in order to fix a camera on the object and let it always follow the object while also being able to move it easily and freely. Also, Polyfjord has recently released his first asset kit that contains some animated rigs and in this video, he will show you how to create similar rigs to the ones he made by showing us the rigging workflow. He actually made a similar video a while ago, but in that video, he made too many unneeded steps and added too many empties, so he made a new one showing his new workflow. In this workflow, you will be setting up the rig first and then attaching the object to it. So you will be seeing how to set up a rig for two things. The first rig is for a six-legged creature and the second one is for a hand. Additionally, you will learn how to set up and use inverse kinematics constraints and how to lock bones axes in order to build a powerful rig. The benefit of the workflow is that it makes the rig perfectly aligned with the grid which will help you easily add and parent objects to the bones. Clever Polly has been killing it lately with these tutorials, and the most recent one is very cool. It is all about how to create an inflated logo animation, and he always does this in his tutorials, because he uses a lot of geometry nodes, and this time around, it is a very simple node setup, but the result is great. He also used some cloth simulation to make the inflating effect, and this really shows the power of what you can actually do when mixing geometry nodes with some cloth simulation, which is truly amazing. You can use this effect to make amazing intro animations for your brand or clients, which is gonna be really impressive. The next one we're gonna talk about is from Halifax Learn, and it is all about how to track anything to objects inside Blender. The method he demonstrated is very easy to use, and pretty much anyone can do it. All you need to do is a camera or a phone to record the footage, then you simply import the video into Blender and add some trackers to the clip. After that, you create the object you want to be tracked and add an object solver constraint to make the object follow the trackers that you previously created. In this video, you will also learn some techniques when it comes to making an interior world inside a plain object, and how to do compositing to blend the footage and the scene that you made. The next one is kind of a long tutorial, but trust me, it is gonna be very helpful. It literally shows you everything you need to know about product animation. You will learn how to create a modern 3D animation of a shoe. He used many and different techniques in order to make a perfect and a very beautiful animation. He also used a lot of geometry nodes along with some cloth simulation to create different types of effects, such as the revealing and the knitting effects in addition to the inflating effect. He also shows you some cool animation tricks and how correctly time your animation using the graph editor. Additionally, you will also learn some cool shading techniques as well as some rendering techniques in order to make a render stand out. And although it has a lot of advanced stuff in it, the instructor actually made it look simple and even beginners can understand and follow with the tutorial. The next one is from Pixel3D and it is all about how to make ponyo animation in Blender. In this video, he doesn't really go into detail and the depth of making a similar animation, but instead, he just created an overview of his project showing what he did on every aspect of the animation. 
So if you want to learn a little bit about how the making of Ponyo animation is created, make sure to check this video out because it has a lot of stuff in it. Lupin animations nowadays are literally everywhere. They are on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and even Spotify. So if you want to learn how to do that, Ducky3D will help you a lot with this video where he recently released a new video showcasing 5 ways to make looping animations in Blender. The ways he talked about are interesting and pretty simple and any beginner can use them. Additionally, he shows you how to loop object rotations as well as how to loop camera animations and how to use the cycle modifier in the graph editor to make the animation loop even longer. Also, Max Hay released yet another amazing video, and this time it is a quick one, talking about how to make some nice realistic water inside Blender. As usual, he will give you some excellent advice, shortcuts, and instructions on how to make things that look really hard, doable in an easy way. In this video, he demonstrated how to use basic nodes to make a shader for any sort of water. Additionally, the nodes he used are really basic because we are all familiar with using them. He utilized the principal BSDF combined with a bump and musk grave texture node, mixed with a transparent BSDF node, then added a principled volume shader to give the water some volume and color. Furthermore, the only node that we are probably not used to using is the light path node, which you can learn more about in the Ian Huber channel. The last one we will be taking a look at today is from Tunnel Rat. He made this video on how to make a vintage anime with Blender and some Photoshop. The tutorial is short but goes straight to the point where he starts by first showing you how to achieve anime and cartoon looking colors. This is done by just adding three shaded nodes which are the diffuse BSDF shader, shader to RBG node and the color ramp node. After that, he shows you how to create the 2D look by giving the object some lines and he did this by adding the line art modifier to a grease pencil stroke. He then finishes everything by rendering the character and then taking it to Photoshop for post-processing to add a background and more details. I hope you found these tutorials useful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.